So, it seems that there are a lot of people who are having issues with their Ender 3 V3 adhesion. Now, you might have a different problem, but it seems like most of the time it comes down to the auto leveling and Z calibration not working properly. It's looking like most people's printers aren't going to be able to perform to its full potential without some manual adjustments. I spent a lot of time in plastic adjusting my printer, so let's try and save some of both for you. If you know some of the subjects talked about in this video already, or need to reference a specific topic again, there will be timestamps in the description. So I talked about my battle with this printer in a previous video, link in the description. So we're going to just talk about how I fixed and leveled my bed, and give you some tips to hopefully speed up your leveling process. Let's talk about the obnoxious solution we have to go through first. First you have to get a baseline level. This is so that hopefully your printer will be able to lay down plastic decent enough to get a test out, but without damaging or breaking anything. Though try to also be aware of the rare occasion that the bed or Z offset set themselves too low. So after doing the automated level test, you need to get a test print. There aren't many or any at the time of this recording bed leveling tests that work in the same grid as the Ender 3 V3s at the moment. So, in my previous video, I requested the official bed level test from Creality, and they sent me the G-code. Not an STL, so not perfect, but it can work. I have uploaded the file to GitHub, and will hopefully put the link in the description. If it's not, it's in the last video I made called Having Trouble with Your Ender 3 V3, So Am I, which should again, it should be in the description. So make sure to print your test print at the same bed temperature that you would be printing at normally. And for your first prints, I recommend starting with some more affordable filament, even if it's not what you would use in the end. I recommend starting with a well-known affordable PLA first. This will give you a good baseline moving forward. After getting good results with that, then you should move to your more expensive final product just to make sure that that works. And this is all if it applies to you because most people are going to be printing with regular PLA anyway. If you're skeptical like me, you may have run the bed leveling procedure over the bed level test, the print, to check the accuracy. At the moment, you'll probably find that most of the probe points are actually inaccurate and they aren't even really close to the center. <clears throat> this alarmed me at first too, but I managed to level my bed anyway, so you should be able to as well even with, with these inaccuracies. So setting the 9 point probe shots aside, we move on to the most important step. This is identifying which points need lowering, heightening, or are just right. Make sure to let your bed cool enough before trying to take your print, test print off the bed. If your print is over adhered to your bed, first of all, try to find a way to remove it. When I had issues before with over adhesion, I turned the heat back up on the bed and managed to pry off the print with a scraping spatula and brute force. This method should only be used as a last resort, as I was informed it can be bad for the bed and or printer, though I wasn't informed why. I will try to remember to leave some links to alternative methods of removal in the description as well. Once you get the old print off, raise the Z offset by a significant amount like 0.1 or 0.2 millimeters if you want to be safe and not have to struggle and possibly damage something again. As an additional tip, if you continue to have over adhesion problems and can't find a good first layer for some reason, using a glue stick or hairspray can not only help you with initial adhesion but also print removal by acting as a buffer layer between your print and the build surface. With your print now off the build surface, we can examine the top and bottom of the print. If you use the Creality test, there should only be one layer, but even so, it's good to inspect the whole model. Before we begin with this list, if you get lost during the, these explanations, I will try to summarize at the end of them. There are a few anomalies that can occur with high spots, all identified by varying urgencies of holes. If you see full streak holes going along the grain of your print, lower that point by 0.02. These can be identified by seeing through the print, like looking through a small shutter window, or by pushing on a square and not having a solid object that can't wrap around your finger. If you see streak gaps, use your best judgment based on the size to decide to lower the point by 0 0.01 or 0 
These are identified when you start to have a good square, but there is still a streak of plastic missing. If you have gaps or holes separating your walls from the skin, it's up to you how to decide to how to handle this situation. Sometimes this can be a one-off thing with this model, so you can either leave it and observe the spot again on the next print, or you can lower that point by 0 .01. This can be identified by obvious separations of the outer lines and the inner square. Low spots, unfortunately for the video, I only have a small experience with, but to my knowledge there would only be two outcomes from these low spots. Let's start with your worst option. If you have the nozzle so pressed down on the build plate that you're having a thin line shutter effect or there's no plastic even coming out, either you have a different issue or your nozzle and bed are probably being damaged and most likely need to be raised by 0 0.02 or more. I didn't have this issue so I would lean towards 0 0.04 or 0 0.06 just to be safe. Now this one I did encounter at one point. If you have a completed square pad, usually looking good on the bottom, but have a wavy or ribbed top, then you would have a slightly low spot that's pressing a little too close to the plate and is having plastic squish around the nozzle. I suggest raising the point by 0 0.02. You could take the adjustment slower, but you are rubbing your nozzle through plastic kind of and all that, so I would say be safer than sorrier and just possibly over-raise the point, then continue to have it have the possible extra wear on your components. You will know you have a good first layer when you have a relatively smooth top to your print without any gaps. But keep in mind that 3D printing isn't always perfect, so there can be minor imperfections. And you will know you have a good first layer when you have a smooth bottom layer with lines that are properly squished together if you have a smoother build surface. If you're using the stock build plate or another textured surface, your first layers should most likely be seamless and will probably have the, that gritty feel that texture surfaces normally give you. So, to attempt to summarize what we just talked about. If you have a thicker shutter blind effect, you have a bigger tall spot that needs to be lowered. If you have a full plastic streak missing based on the size, you may have a bigger or smaller tall spot. If you have a separation from the outer line and inner skin, it's up to you either to minorly lower the point or to see if it happens again. If you have a thin shutter blind effect or don't have plastic coming out, raise that point a lot or you may have a different problem. If you have a good bottom but a ribbed top, raise that point by at least 0 0.02. And finally, you've struck gold if you have a mostly smooth top and a bottom that is seamless or has lines with a good squish. If you need further explanation on any of these summarized points, there should most likely be timestamps labeling the start of the full explanation for all of them. So, now use your findings based on the test and go through and adjust all points as needed. This can make the task even more frustrating because when you tap edit, it will always bring you to the first point on the grid. A small additional gripe is that it moves vertically, then moves to the next horizontal column. On top of that, after fixing one point, it will always bring you back out of the point selection and make you select edit again which will then make you start from the first point and scroll to the next point needed every time. This small oversight can make the process take that much longer and become that much more infuriating. After you make your adjustments, repeat the process but keep these things in mind. Don't do the automatic relevel for your bed. You basically don't want to do it ever effectively after you complete this whole process. If you do, this will just be resetting the manual adjustments you made and who knows what data it will leave your printer with. In the same vein, don't enable the pre-print calibration. This will again override your manual adjustments and make everything suck again. Some final tips I can give you are make sure to write down your findings. I have a book where I was keeping both notes about what numbers were used and what needed to happen after using them, represented by arrows. Every arrow I used represented 0 0.01 of that adjustment. I recommend using lined paper so you can make the grid easier when taking notes. 
Another reason to take notes is that if your manual data gets overridden for any reason, whether it be because you forgot to not do the auto bed leveling, or you accidentally hit the reset configuration button, which by the way is conveniently located between the edit level data and printer info, and has no confir confirmation prompt, uh, it just resets your printer. If you have your your notes, you can set the info back to your findings and continue to fix your bed or enjoy printing if you already managed to do so. If you're using the stock print bed, it is still probably a good idea to get a PEI bed or something of the sort still. People in general have typically not liked the cheaper material the stock textured side is made out of and the smooth side is just a pain to use. If you get a properly manufactured PEI bed, you most likely won't even have to use any additives like glue or hairspray to get a proper removal from the print bed. My final tip is that it's likely that over time, with use of your printer, more specifically with heating and cooling of the bed, it's very possible that your bed's shape will slowly start to shift. Just make sure to keep your test file around to be able to do some adjustments if needed. That is, of course, if Creality doesn't fix this problem by then. Let's hope so. Another tip I forgot to add was if you are using the Creality bed test and you lose track of the proper orientation while examining it, the Ender 3 V3 has a pre-extrusion line that it will put down no matter what model you print. This line is put in the bottom left section of the bed test if you're looking at it from the top. If you found this video informational or even somewhat entertaining somehow, then please leave a like. This channel is typically a music channel where I talk about guitar and drum related content, but there's been quite a bit of 3D printing videos lately, because that's what's important to me right now. I'm hoping to have a video out in the near future talking about how 3D printing can help your musicianship. If any of that sounds good to you, then please consider subscribing. That's all I have to say for now, so I'm going to say, bye bye